Hello everyone, hello dear followers of Regeneration International and dear organic consumers. Uh, we're here for our second interview in Kyoto in Japan for agriculture as the solution to climate change. Uh, and I'm here with my good friend Sandeep, Sandeep Kamat. Uh, Sandeep uh, is here with the, uh, well actually he's representing the uh, Biodynamic Agriculture Association of India and he's been invited here by the 4 per 1000 initiative uh, that is co-organizing uh, a farmers event uh, tomorrow uh, here in, uh, in Kyoto with uh, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries of Japan and uh, the Food and, A Food and Agriculture Organization uh, of the United Nations. Sandeep, hello. Hi, Olivo. So, Sandeep, what are you, do you want to, do you want to no, use No, it's okay. This? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. This is mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, so, Sandeep, uh, tell us, what are you going to be talking about tomorrow? Yeah, well, I'm going to be talking about how biodynamics has been at the forefront of carbon sequestration. And uh, if you saw the report which came out on Saturday from the Mauna Lao Hawaii Observatory in Hawaii, where at this Anthropocene, Anthropocene age, we are the highest uh, carbon dioxide in the air. It's 415 parts per million. And uh, this theme of the conference really resonates with biodynamics, where agriculture is the solution to, to solve this problem of climate change. In my presentation tomorrow about the UN United Nations report which came out in 2013 on trade and environment which had a very large contribution for a number of biodynamic farmers and I will also talk about how biodynamics is now existing in more than 40 countries and we have hundreds of thousands of farms in different scales from very large farms to small farmers in India and really mesh, uh, meshing in with the local conditions so it's, it's really suiting any geography in the world today and not either Europe or Africa or, or Asia, but it's, it's all over the world. So most biodynamic farms generate large amount of compost made out of material from the waste from their farms and um, this really helps build a carbon sequestration. So this actually has the power to turn conventional farms that are uh, huge sources of emission to carbon sinks. If we were to convert to uh, biodynamics, Absolutely. It's, uh, it's proved. Uh, there are a lot of studies. There's a lot of research out there. Biodynamics since the 1920s has attracted a lot of farmers and researchers. We have a whole body of research material. Also, I would like to bring out the fact that in India, where I'm from, you know, we had more than 300,000 farmer suicides over the past uh, one and a half decade. And this was 80% in the cotton, with cotton farmers. And that has among 95% of that cotton is with the GMO industry. So not only is it a carbon sink and helping the environment, but it's also creating livelihoods for many, many farmers. And these farmers are now able to be sustainable, financially sustainable, move from a subsistence level of living to a livelihood. They can make livelihood out of agriculture. And also they're growing nutritious food for their local communities while being a carbon sink. So we have to look at it holistically, not only from one aspect of just the carbon sink, but also it's having an impact on society for the farmers and the consumers. And it's a win-win-win situation for all. The 4 per 1000 uh, initiative mm. um, is all about creating policy to, uh, that would encourage farmers and reward farmers to sequester uh, carbon in soils. And it is also uh, a huge uh, acknowledgement uh, from um, the government and uh, from governments that it is possible to increase uh, carbon in soils. Now, one of the pioneering carbon farming projects mm -hmm. is a biodynamic project yes. in Egypt, yes. right? The second project, which is called the Miracle of the Desert, which was founded by uh, Dr. Ibrahim Abulesh uh, 40 years ago in the late 70s, where using biodynamic methods, especially composting, they have created uh, a forest in the desert. And uh, it's been such a successful project. It was the first, one of the first projects, if I'm right, 20 years ago to start actually measuring carbon sequestration. They have studies out. They have a, a over 10 year report on that, on what is the impact of carbon sinks with doing organic and regenerative farming, biodynamics. And also now they're going to the second phase where they're taking another large hectare area of forest to convert uh, dynamics and regenerative agriculture. You've been invited here to Japan um, by the 4 per 1000 initiative and the government of Japan, the uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, mm -hmm. uh, 
and you're coming here to promote a very holistic approach. This is a global moment. It has to be really done at a global level. So I'm very happy that the Japanese government is showing such a such a concern about this impact. You know, we had the, the governor, we had the minister of agriculture and the governor of the prefecture yesterday talking about the effect which is already there in this particular lake, which we see as such a beautiful lake already having the impact of climate change on the fish and the fauna. I am really happy to be here to to we can do this together as a global moment because it's not India or Japan, it's it's all of us together. It cannot, cannot be done in isolation by one particular country, or even though India is quite large compared to Japan, but it is still that we have to all do this together, many, many countries at a time. We have to all do this together. We're, we are here on this initiative and we encourage all of you out there uh, behind your computers to spread the great message that is regeneration in, in agriculture. Sandeep, thank you so much. That was so inspiring. Uh, thank you for your time. I You're think we'll, we'll wrap this up now. Mm. Uh, thank you, people, for watching. As always, remember that you can join us on our website at regenerationinternational.org to sign up to our newsletter and also sign up to the newsletter at Organic Consumers to get all the latest information uh, about food safety. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, and also, uh, you can uh, join our partners at kisstheground.com if you're interested to become a soil advocate, you want to take part in uh, soil advocacy and tell all your friends, tell the world, become a storyteller of the great solution that is soil to help reverse uh, climate change. Signing off with Lake Biwa in the background. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll be back with you very soon. <laughs>